You are listening to Fanther Tracks. It's time to spin round the rim. This is Desert Planet Discs. Star Wars music in a single file. Carl Bayless. Hello and welcome to this special edition of Desert Planet Discs brought to you by Fanta Tracks. Today I'm going to be interviewing drummer, recording artist and Star Wars fan Emily Dolan Davis. Joining us today is drummer extraordinaire. I'll let her list the numerous artists she's worked with over the years herself, because I'm bound to miss somebody and it'll be something mm-hmm. important. Emily Dolan Davis also hosts her own podcast, uh, Drummer's Guide 2, and YouTube videos to accompany those. So uh, welcome, Emily. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, yeah, such a joy. The small conversation that we've already had, I'm already, like, in my element right now, yeah. sort of talking about Star Wars and reminiscing. And, yeah, so thank you so much for having me, Carl. No, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yeah, tell people who haven't even heard of you before, yeah. tell us a bit about yourself. Well, uh, I am a drummer. I am from the UK. I've been hitting things since I was 11 years old, and I happen to be able to call myself a professional and get paid for doing that thing, which is just still the most mental concept to me and I I sort of count myself very very lucky to do that I've played with a a ton of people basically the joke that I always say which is kind of true is I say I basically play with anyone that will have me and some people that have let me into their world you may have heard of so uh, at the moment I'm out touring with Kim Wilde just been doing The Voice Kids so it's the kids version of The Voice I've been in the house band for that which has been amazing and um, yes we will talk about that more because of where it's been I've also played with The Darkness uh, Brian Ferry Howard Jones Tricky uh, Cher Lloyd I mean yeah I like I say anyone that will have me I'm like yeah I'll come play with you and um, in the last three or four years I've started started my own remote recording business so recording drums for anyone in the world that has an internet connection basically that can send me their music I'll record drums on them send them back the multi-track stems for them to put into their project and produce and create music basically so I've been doing that as well as as you said a drummer's guide to which is this educational series which I never thought I would be an educator as such because I I feel like such an idiot most of the time <laughs> the thought of actually educating people seems mental but I had this thought of putting out information that I felt that I would really like to have if I was coming up again starting out or you know midway through my journey and and trying to work out what I should be doing best practices what to expect or or just what I should be working on generally as a drummer as a musician and also I just thought to be able to vocalize that if you're feeling a certain way chances are someone else has also felt that way and they've gotten through it they've gotten past it and I I'd like to think you know I I often see myself like if me this random girl from North London can become a professional musician and make their living doing that then literally I truly believe that anyone can do it <laughs> so it's kind of trying to express that to a wider audience and and as I say it's I've inadvertently sort of become an educator by just wanting to put that information out there which yeah it's really great and it's really good fun yeah we were chatting before the drummer's guide 2 is, is a great series if any of our listeners haven't checked it out, uh, please do. Even if you're not a musician, you're not a drummer, there's so much you can take out of it as almost life lessons, which which I a slight, slightly different slant on my musical career, but <laughs> yeah, no less the richer for having listened to it. So it is oh. it is something that I think a lot of people could take a lot from. Thank you, Carl. I, that that means so much. And as you said, I, I I'm always shocked how many 
people respond to it that aren't musicians or aren't drummers. I know you are a drummer, but they relate to it in such a different way. I mean, I've had actors come up to me and like, loving your podcast. It's amazing. I really, yeah. it really resonates with me. And I'm like, what? what? How did you find it, first of all? Because the title yeah. alone, <laughs> A Drummer's Guide to, like, yeah. oh, okay. So it's lovely. It's really nice to be able to connect with people and and just share experiences and commonalities in what you say, uh, as you say, sorry, um, it's just life experience. It's not about because I'm a drummer. It's just a life experience that I find many people have very similar experiences. Obviously, we're a Star Wars centric podcast. Yes. As well, as well as music. Your Star Wars fandom journey. Tell us a bit about how you got into Star Wars. Yeah. Well, the way I got into Star Wars was they re-released A New Hope, didn't they, in the 90s. I want to say it was like 94 or some, maybe 93. Is that what your poster is behind you? Yeah, my poster behind me is 97. Oh, 97. That's later March than I thought. 31st, 1997. Oh, my goodness. That poster in the background there, which obviously doesn't work in audio. <laughs> <laughs> there is a poster behind Carl's head, and it is representative of when I first saw Star Wars. So I thought I was younger. That's so interesting. OK, so it came out in 97, which meant that I was 10 years old. And my parents were just like, to me and my little sister, she's two years younger than me, right, we go and see Star Wars. It's like the best film ever. It's the best series of films ever. And and good parenting. Oh, I think so. <laughs> I think I think they're all right. And I just I remember distinctly sitting down at the cinema. I think we even made a real like trip of it. So we went into central London. I seem to remember that we went to like the Leicester Square Odeon. It was like it was a big deal. And growing up, you know, our family we did we weren't well off or anything like that. So this. To go to the cinema at all was a massive treat. But then I remember sitting down and I just remember the noise of those opening credits and just being like almost pinned to my seat and just like, what is this? What is, what is happening? Like, what am I experiencing here? Yeah, I just remember just being completely... I mean, you know, I think musicians generally, we get quite obsessed with things. And I just remember falling completely in love with the whole story the thing of being a jedi and like oh my gosh and you can train and you can be this elite human with these special powers and i was just taken by the whole story to the point that i remember going home me and my sister would be in the garden we would be training and trying to be jedis as well and it was a really interesting thing because i only think about this sort of like after the fact because to me when i was younger it was normal but you know you look at the characters and they're mainly men and a lot of people would always say to me like later on oh but you know you obviously wanted to be leia and i was like no i wanted to be luke like luke is the coolest person ever so um yeah i just became completely obsessed from that point and i think then we got hold of the vhs which was on repeat in our house for a long long time and then obviously seeing the next two films after that empire strikes back and return of the jedi and i was just yeah i just i i fell in love like we all like everyone listening to this yes. i'm sure can relate that first moment of, of just that opening scene, uh, just, you know, the door opening and them shooting and it, it, just, it was just magical. And I, I mean, this sounds awful and it probably says a lot about how I feel about the newer stuff, which I'm sure we'll go into. But I've been desperate to recapture that magic of seeing it for the first time with the new films. And whilst they bring some very good elements and, you know, with all the new technology that they can use and blah, 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 blah. I think nothing, unfortunately, will ever beat that initial feeling of watching that, that that series of films as a kid and just being like, I want to be Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've never thought of this before, but that's exactly my first experience of Star Wars was A New Hope, but in 1977 as a five-year-old or something. Amazing. But it's exactly the same thing sort of 20 years later. I know there's a lot of people, you know, such some of our previous guests and stuff, have said, oh, yeah, you know, I got into it. I went to see, you know, Dad took me to see The Phantom Menace and the prequel trilogy is there. Oh, that makes me awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, and it's 
it, it is one of those things that you know there were going to be kids out there that the sequel trilogy was their their era of Star Wars. The same with the animated stuff. Oh yeah. yeah but it's it's only just dawned on me that there was an era of children that got to see New Hope as their <laughs> first experience of Star Wars. Yeah. Exactly as we did, albeit yeah. the special editions. So. Yeah, it's so funny, isn't it? And like you say, I mean, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the prequels, but I'm sure that whoever did see the Phantom Menace as their first Star Wars experience probably yeah. felt exactly the same way that we yeah. did. And therefore, it doesn't make it any more or less valuable. And I think as long as it created that feeling, which it obviously has, because yeah. look at the thousands upon thousands upon thousands, if not millions of Star Wars fans. So yeah. as long as it evokes that and whether, you know, these new three that just maybe, you know, the Rise of the Skywalker was someone's yeah. first film seeing, if it's still promotes that same feeling of inspiration i'm all for it like yeah. all good <laughs> hello i'm ahmed best and you're listening to fentha tracks talking of the impact of the music as a musician yeah. have, have you seen any of the arena tours with an orchestra yeah do you know what i haven't seen any of the star wars ones i have seen other films like yeah. i went and saw there will be blood with a live orchestra which yeah. was pretty phenomenal is again one of my favorite films but i would be interested in going to see the star yeah, the, wars one the, for the sure star, the star wars ones i think they've just done empire strikes back they're doing return of the jedi towards the end of this year oh are they do you know whereabouts is it the where I is it in um... london i think they're doing the albert hall that makes sense yeah nice yeah. nice setting to do it in definitely yeah. that's what yeah. i would suggest the, the last couple we've been to have been at the uh whatever they're calling it this week oh uh, nec nia nia yeah i can never keep up either i'm like i i don't know it's the same building it's just it had 12 different names since it was last here so i think i think the next one is going to be at symphony hall oh that'd be nice lovely room yes oh amazing played symphony hall it's so funny you're saying that. I have a feeling I have probably got this so wrong. I may be there in September with Kim, but I'm not convinced because it sounds like it might be it might be the smaller hall or in fact, let me just look. Sorry, this is <laughs> so it's just I don't want to seem like I mean I am a bit of an idiot, but you know, I want to feel like I know roughly what I'm doing with my life because I honestly <laughs> have right, no idea. September. That's a <laughs> <laughs> I know, but even so. Yeah, Symphony Hall. We're playing the Symphony Hall oh, on cool. 21st of September. But that sounds like a really big room. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Kim pulls a crowd, but that's yeah. a big room. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's a very big room, but it's it's also really nice. It's sort of acoustically designed the ceiling. Oh, yeah. It's like all these different movable parts. So oh, orig amazing. originally it was, it was designed for the uh, City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. Right. To, to do stuff so it's got all the proper choir seating around the back of the stage wow. but then this movable roof i think it was opened by elton john oh really amazing yeah it's 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 one of those things if you if you look into the actual sort of mechanics and history of the building is fantastic wow i'll make sure to go and have a look that's close to you then we'll have to get you down to a show then <laughs> oh yeah definitely yeah. i mean one of the things i was going to talk about off air but <laughs> all right it's <laughs> fine Massive Kim fan. Uh, Are you? Oh, mate, then you've definitely got to come to the yes. show. <laughs> yes, to the yes. point that the adolescent me had Star Wars posters and a massive Kim World poster. Yes, that's amazing. So, speaking <laughs> of worlds right now, Kim yeah. World and Star Wars on a podcast right now. Go. Love it. Oh, yeah, that's we'll, so we'll cool. Change over halfway through, it'll be the Kim cast. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, oh, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you shared that. Thank you. Yeah. I saw Kim a couple of years ago in Birmingham, but I think that was before you were playing because it was it was a Christmas thing when it was a double header with Nick Kershaw. Yeah, that was literally just before I joined. Yeah. So it's it's a double drummer thing now as well. So you've yes. got two drummers to enjoy. <laughs> oh, it's very noisy on that stage, I can tell you, but yes. it's a lot of fun. <laughs> the band, when I saw them, you know, everybody looks like they're having such just such a great time. Oh yeah, it literally is a party on stage, and it's it's such an unusual setup in terms of personalities and, and personnel because yes. 
obviously you've got Kim and then you've got her brother Rick on guitar yeah. and then Rick's daughter Scarlett is on backing vocals, backing vocals which yeah. means that it's a very family centric sort of yeah. affair and what's really interesting about that and so wonderful because I mean do you have siblings out of interest yes yes okay yes, so sir. I have a sister and I'm sure you're the same. My sister would not let me get away with anything if I ever like overstepped the mark or was acting at all, even slightly like arrogant, or, not yeah. that I would, but do you know what I mean? Like yeah. anything, any sniff of that, she'd be the first person to be like, eh, really? Yeah. So, and it's very much like that on the road, especially having Scarlett there because she is Rick's daughter, so yeah. I mean, I know what I'm like with my dad. I love my dad to pieces, yeah. but I'll be the first one to be like taking yeah. the mick out of him. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and it's very much like that, which is just this. It creates this yeah. wonderful, fun environment. And Kim and Rick are so they're so much fun anyway. They love practical jokes and like, yeah. you know, life is just too short not to have a laugh for them. I mean, yeah. honestly, it is constant laughter on and off stage. It's just, it's so much fun. I can't even express. So I'm glad that it's come across like that on stage yeah. as well for you. So that's really yeah. cool to hear. Obviously working with Kim this year and you mentioned that you've been the house band drummer for the Voice Kids. Yeah. Which, which also brings us to another Star Wars tie-in because yes. that's filmed, I believe, at Elstree. It is! Oh <laughs> my gosh. So, okay, so the first, so the way the voice kids works is there's all these different uh, heats, as it were. So they start off doing the thing, these things called the blinds. And that's where um, the judges sit in chairs with their backs to the singers so they can't see them at all. All they hear is their voice. Hence, the voice but um so all of that is filmed up in manchester so up at media city there really really cool and then uh, i got told they were like oh yeah so the next lot of filming so from the battles onwards we've just done the battles it's gonna be at elstree and i was like that's fun i've sort of been to elstree a couple of times for some random things but it'll be nice to spend some proper time there and i sort of had it in the back of my head that you know some star wars stuff had been filmed there and amongst uh, many other things obviously <laughs> And we got there, and as I was saying to you before we started recording, the bass player was like, oh, no, but do you actually understand, like, what was filmed here? And and we were walking back from lunch, and we were coming up to... Bear in mind, we've been in this studio for a day and a half, and it's only at this point that I look up at the building, and it says George Lucas stage, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the whole building is called the George Lucas stage. Right, yeah. well, that's probably a bit of a clue. And then he was like, right, so out here in the, the parking lot, literally right here, parking lot? I'm not American, yeah. in the car park. <laughs> so here, literally, they had all the attats, all the walkers, you know, and he was saying about how small they were, and it was covered in, not sn real snow, but, you know, covered in yeah. snow, and they were doing all the camera tricks to get it all done. But it was literally done right here where we're walking, and I was like, it's kind of ruining the magic here a little bit yes. but okay that's fine like okay amazing and then sort of we well he then proceeded to tell me that one of my favorite ever scenes in star wars when luke is training with yoda on his back and he's doing all the somersaults and he's running around he was like oh yeah no that that was done in this building literally where we're sitting right now yeah. also this is the the hangar where the x-wings were and also that i saw this picture of the millennium falcon in this building and i was yeah. like this is just my childhood and I'm in this room and I can't believe that this is all happening right now. And I was literally, you know, when you're just dumbstruck, even to the point where when I was in the toilet at one point, I was like, I wonder if Carrie Fisher used this toilet. <laughs> I mean, this is how ridiculous my brain is, but I just, I like these moments of like, life is pretty mental and pretty extraordinary. Like this is kind of amazing from that point of being the nine ten year old me and feeling like that to the point that i was at that moment i was like wow that's that's crazy <laughs> yeah as you say i think i'm right in saying that the a lot of the jabba palace stuff was filmed there as well oh really yeah, yeah. see this is what i mean i feel like you could tell me what oh in fact i did hear as well that you know when luke's uh looking at the sand people yeah. From the big, what well, I don't even know what they're called, what they ride, but um, those Banthers. big. Say again? Panthers. Panthers. Okay, so apparently, <laughs> I was like, they said uh, that that was an elephant dressed up, basically. That's what they were. So yeah. there was just an elephant kicking about Elstree at some <laughs> point. 
I was like, of course there was an elephant kicking about L Street in the, yeah. you know, at that time. That was not unusual, but yeah. you just, just you just think that. From Blue Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of it, that. Just down the road. Like, Come on, just, uh, you know, shove them on a truck. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's just amazing. It was just my, my, uh, I would love to say my child self, but it's me. I just, <laughs> yeah, I was totally awe-inspired and, and just there. And and knowing that, you know, Harrison Ford was also there doing Indiana Jones and all that, are some pretty cool pictures of him just walking down the street in the full get-up. And, I mean, I'm not a huge Indiana Jones fan, but I'm a huge Harrison Ford fan. And I was just like, wow, I mean, this is, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we touched on earlier the newer films. Have you caught up? I have. Me and my husband went to see the last one literally two weeks ago. And I I like to be positive about everything. Like, <laughs> I try and find the positive. And, and whilst I did enjoy elements of it, and I, I do enjoy elements of the new characters, this is probably going to be awful. And probably a lot of your listeners are going to go, I literally hate you for <laughs> saying this. And I apologise in advance for what I'm about to say, but it's genuinely how I feel, and 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 it is harsh. And I right, I I'm just going to say it. I felt like watching that film at the start. It felt like a bit of a checkbox ticking sort of thing, where it was like, right, we just have to make sure that we have this cameo, and they have to say this thing, and then yeah, let's repeat that line three times. Why? I don't know, but hey. And, you know, it was just all the characters just had their moments and they it was just signing it off almost. And yeah. it, it just felt a bit clumsy for, from my point of view. But then again, who am I to say? I can't make films. You know, I literally, like I say, I hit things for a living. What do I know? And as I said to you earlier, I, I, I feel like I just, I wanted so desperately for this last film to feel the way that I felt as a kid and it didn't happen but that's because I am a 32 year old woman now I am not a nine-year-old child but you know I just I felt I just felt a little bit disappointed in where it ended up but in saying that I'm like I say, I'm really glad with the characters that have been made and and in and also I, I mean I have enjoyed some of the other films like Rogue One I thought was brilliant I really enjoyed that just as a standalone. I know, I, well, I heard that they're doing some more stuff to do with a prequels to Rogue One. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, so Disney are launching their sort of Netflix rival streaming service. So they've got several things sort of on the slate. Checking your inboxes, guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, it's me, Kevin Smith, Star Wars fan, Fanta Tracks fan. So they've already done a series called The Mandalorian which aired sort of the end of last year and probably not been able to avoid half the uh, internet spoilers of uh, certain characters from that. But uh... But in fairness, it does just make me want to watch it even more. And as I was saying to you, if I'd have had, if I'd have had the time, I probably would have found a way, but yeah, Yeah. either I'll wait till the, till March or, or maybe I won't, but yes. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah. So there's there's obviously been that series that's aired so far. They literally, as we record, a couple of days ago, started streaming a seventh series of the Clone Wars animated show. Oh, cool. I've never actually seen the animated show, but I hear it's amazing. And it's funny because my family has a lot of ties in animation. I grew up watching yeah. a lot of animation, so I probably should watch the Clone Wars, really. Yeah, they did sort of five full series that banks between Disney and Nickelodeon, I think it was. Oh, yeah, that rings a bell, yeah. So, and they sort of ping, ping between there. And then when Disney took over Lucasfilm, they sort of put the brakes on it because I think George Lucas is reputedly was spending about a million quid an episode on this connected <laughs> show. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, I love then, him. Oh, let's, let's, let's rein that spending in a little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did finish off DVD Blu ray in certain territories, UK not being one of them. Uh, oh. I, I think I've got it on import from Germany or something. Oh, cool. Which was kind of the episodes they got finished off. Then they then they did some that they put out to the, the Star Wars website, which was very much more just sort of like, here here's a sort of completed story arc. However, we haven't finished off all the animation, so it was a bit rough and ready. Oh, uh, that's interesting. And then, obviously, they've just launched this service 
the back end of last year in the US and Europe gets it at the end of March. So they're obviously looking for content for that. So they, I think they've taken some of the other story arcs and brought those up to the broadcastable standard. Oh, that's uh, cool. So It'll be I, very interesting to see because I'm, I know it sounds awful. I'm so, I will really begrudge having to spend money on another streaming service because yes. <laughs> it just feels like I'm, spe- I'm going to be spending about 50 quid a month just yeah. on streaming, which is, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I it just, I hope it's amazing. I hope it's amazing. Yeah. As I say, there's a Rogue One show, which yeah. is centered around Diego Luna, Cassie oh, Nadal. Cool. It's supposed to be a sort of, obviously, Spoiler alert, folks, it can't come after Rogue One. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, do you know what's awful? That's the thing that I loved the most about Rogue yeah. One. It was like, it me- like this makes me sound like the darkest person. It <laughs> made me so happy when that end scene, and I was like, yeah. brilliant, thank you, an ending, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was kind of hoping not, for that. It's not all happily ever after. <laughs> no, exactly. It's just like it's not too Disney, but you yeah. know, it's just yeah. I was like, I appreciated it. You know, I, I appreciated that it was more about the storytelling than keeping people happy or so. I don't know what it yeah. was. There were, I often have that. If the, if a film ends with a really dark ending, I'm like, great, you told this story for the story, not yeah. for the Hollywood ending where everybody lives happily ever after, which is fine in some circumstances, but, you know, it's it's yeah. nice to have that as well, that human element. There's supposed to be an Obi-Wan Kenobi series as well, which they've got you and oh, McGregor. Yeah, I saw that you and McGregor was back on that, so that'd be... Yeah. That'd be interesting, Matt. Yeah, yeah. All sorts of rumours flying around about other projects and stuff, which I think after Solo, which I really enjoyed, and I know a lot of people really enjoyed, but commercially didn't do that well for them. I think they're more likely, or it seems to be that they're moving more down the route of let's do the TV stuff. Yeah. I think uh, everyone's going down that route at yeah. the moment because the budgets are there and, I mean, they are essentially mini films, every yeah. these well, that, mad series. I think, I think, you know, sort of stuff like Game of Thrones and things like that has, has, has really changed that landscape and you can get these big name actors into, you know, sort of episodic television, so... Yeah. Oh, I've got a very random fact that I I wonder if you don't know this or do know this, but I'll be well impressed if you do, because I didn't even know it until I saw it. In Solo, guess who one of the cast members is related to Kim Wilde? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, no. Her husband is the uh, one... So I haven't watched Solo to the end. I fell asleep. I'm sorry. But... um. Yeah, so one of the guards, uh, like the head guard that get, I mean, he he gets killed pretty quick, and he only has like a couple of lines, but that is Kim Wilde's husband. We saw it was like, is that Hal? So <laughs> Hal Fowler is one of the Imperial guards in. Uh... Uh, well, I assume he's an Imperial guard. I don't know. Anyway, he's one of the bad people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, check that out next time you watch it. Uh, okay. have, a, have a look out for that. Oh, but yeah, I'll... I did. I only watched half of Solo, but what I did watch, yeah. I really enjoyed because I I love backstories. I, I'm fascinated by yeah. people and character arcs and 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 that whole thing with like meeting Chewie and all of that sort of thing. I thought it was done really nicely. Like. It wasn't the most mind-blowing thing in the world, but it was like it was it was, it was, like it. It was, it was, it was a good fun adventure film. Exactly, yeah. I think for what it was, it, it was like nice. to be anything more, and I think I say I, I really enjoyed it, and I yeah. thought it but so. I think, I, in fact, speak saying that, I think I've just realised why I was so frustrated with Rise Skywalker because when we were introduced to Ray there seemed to be so much depth to like her backstory yeah. and where was she from and why yeah. did it happen? And that's what I mean by that sort of checkbox. It wasn't yeah. like indulged in, it wasn't delved into. Yeah. It was like, oh, this is why. And that's why they left. Bye. And it's like, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. This girl has got yeah. a whole life experience based on this one thing happening. And you're literally just going, oh, uh, sorry, that's what happened. See you later. It's like, oh, yeah. OK, uh, cool. Whereas I'm like, OK, so prime example. I mean, obviously, everyone's watched this at the moment. I don't know whether you have um, Joker with Joaquin right. Phoenix. That film, I think, is just stunning. And it's because it is that looking at the human condition and it is dark and it's deep and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I don't know. I'm sure different people think different ways. But that to me is 
so and obviously you can't go that that deep in a disney film let's yeah. not you know let's not try and change out but sort of if there was an in between where you did get to know a little bit about a little bit more about ray and about you know poe and finn because yeah. they're all really fat i know obviously finn is kind of different because he is a clone or, or whatever you know he's from that so it's kind of different but Poe, for instance, like, I don't feel like I know Poe at yeah. all, really. And, oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was just left me a bit cold on the personal side of things and personal experience. And, I mean, coming back to A Drummer's Guide too, and, and, and just putting out there my personal experience so that people can relate to it, I'm very big into that and just understanding why people do the things they do, yeah. you know, and what their motivation is and their worldview, if you like. So, yeah, I think that's why I was frustrated thinking about it. This is like a therapy session. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Provide all sorts of services for all sorts of people. <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as me when I'm sort of saying, oh, yeah, at the moment I'm playing with Brian Ferry. I mean, yeah. these things can be very badly misconstrued, put into the wrong context. Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Or I'm going out with Tricky. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Are you having a date? <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm just on tour. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I understand. <laughs> what would you say is your favourite Star Wars moment? Oh, favourite Star Wars moment. <sighs> mm, there's so many. <laughs> there's <laughs> so <good>. many. <laughs> I wish I wish I'd have known that you'd asked this. I would have thought about this more. Do you know what? I to be honest, the the one that always comes to my mind is when when Luke is training with Yoda in the swampland because it's just that uh, it just really inspired me and it was my I guess one of my first sort of like acknowledgements of if you want something and work hard for it, then it like you can be that Jedi, you can be that person you want to be. And just watching him go through those struggles and not being able to, you know, lift the X-Wing fighter out and, you know, that that battle with himself. Again, it, it comes back to that depth of character that I really just fed into. And it just really stuck with me. And I think it always has in a way. I've never really sort of thought about it, but I just that perseverance was amazing to me. And like I say, that was the thing that inspired me. It's like, right, I'm going to be a Jedi. I'm going to go do... Rah, rah, rah. I mean, it turns out I'm the least sporty person ever. So music is a much better option for me. Yes. But... Um... Yes. <laughs> Size, but sitting down. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I just think about it a lot. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I think that's definitely one that really sticks out for me oh, i don't really know i mean just there's so many little beautiful moments with like i don't know chewy playing chess and and just silly little moments that you're like oh that's so lovely like what a lovely little thing um layer and hands relationship just generally all their back and forth so just crack me up and when they're in oh when they're in that um in the trash compactor thing that used to always scare the bejesus out of me every time even though i knew what was happening it was just like oh no that's awful like just yeah. oh i don't know yeah sorry there's so many that's an awful answer i'm really yeah. giving you an answer <laughs> you covered uh, a lot of bases there yeah sorry yeah. Uh, <laughs> like i said uh, i like to go so on a train of thought <laughs> Hello, this is Sam Whitmer, and you are listening to Fant the Tracks. The day of the training stuff is... Uh... Pretty amazing. And, of course, it's the best film of all time. Yeah, well, <laughs> there's that too, which, you know, helps the whole situation. Although, OK, so are you ready for me to confess something, which uh... I've never confessed, and this is probably the worst place to do it, but for a period of time, my favourite film was Return of the Jedi. And I know that a lot of people that is like, what are you talking about with the Ewoks and all of that? But honestly, I loved it for a little bit. I really yeah. did. But now I'm like, actually, no, do you know what? Love it. But it, yeah, for me, it definitely goes Empire Strikes Back, A New Hope, Return of the Jedi. Like, that's kind of the vibe. Uh, I, I, th I, think, I think a lot of people, you know, the diff different films, uh, as, as we kind of touched on earlier as well, Different films because they they came out at different times in period people's lives. They resonate differently. Some people, you know, we both had the getting to see New Hope as the you know, gateway into Star Wars, if you like. Yeah. Uh, there are some people that will have seen Empire as their first film, and some people will have seen Jedi as their first film. And yeah. So it's different films speak to people because of the 
where they were in that period in their life, you know, what they were up to. Yeah. So, but no, as I say, it's, it's one of those, I think, the wider consensus is uh, every, everybody loves every play. Yeah. It, I mean, it is just, it's a spectacular piece of cinema, storytelling, yeah. just... And, and again, it's, it's that slightly darker tone. Yeah, um, definitely. Which... Which I really love, apparently. Yeah. I love it, you know, when there's... <laughs> Mental health involved. I love it when everyone dies at the end. I yeah. mean, I'm painting a really awful picture of myself. I promise, I'm a very positive person in this life. And you know, <laughs> what have you? What have you got coming up? Well, uh, yeah, coming up. So we finish off the sort of pre-filmed bits for the Voice Kids. So we're doing the semi-finals in a couple of weeks, and then we have a big break, and we do the live finals in August. So that's yeah. pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be mad. And then the rest of this year is basically touring with Kim we've got a few tours around Europe to do uh, it's her greatest hits tour yeah because she's um she's 60 this year in November and yeah she just decided she wants to do this greatest hits tour which is amazing aside from that I got the song list through the other day and I've got about like 25 new songs to learn on top <laughs> of the or like the 20 that we already do or 25 yeah. that we already do so I was like oh okay that's a little more work than I was expecting to do for this but that's fine I love a challenge so it's all good so yeah we've got rehearsals that start for that in about a month's time I think yeah a month and a bit and then in the in-between between, I sort of am plugging up my time with being in the studio recording for people as well as doing the A Drummer's Guide 2 series and, and just sort of like, yeah, getting that together, which, as I say, has been this real revelation for me, being able to give out information and give back to people and help people in such a way that I didn't realise that I love to do so much, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm very lucky. I've got quite a nice spread of different things going on at the moment because I'm I'm the eternal sort of person that needs to have lots of variety going on. Otherwise, it sends me a little bit crazy if I'm only doing one thing. <laughs> so um, it works perfectly for my sort of like my mind. <laughs> I know some people love doing just one thing and they're like, no, that's perfect. And I know exactly what I'm doing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I need variety at all moments. Otherwise, yeah, I start getting I start feeling a bit claustrophobic, I suppose, is the yeah. right it so yeah i'm very i'm in a very lucky stage of life right now and I'm, I'm just enjoying it for what it is i'm fully aware things change all the time so who knows what will happen tomorrow but for now i'm i'm just uh, embracing the situation fully well thanks a million for spending some time with us today and talking yeah. star wars and drums and kim wilde and... <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much it's been so lovely chatting and yeah all, all the best and uh yeah, anytime you want to uh, come back and have a natter, you're more than welcome. Bless you. Thank you so much, Carl, and thanks to everyone for listening. Cheers. Thanks, awesome. Emily. So there you go. Thanks again to Emily for taking time out to speak to us. And please follow her over on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, her website, emilydrums.com. And, of course, don't forget to follow Fantatracks fantatracks.com and on all social media sites at fantatracks until next time hot damn